dragon child. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is another cast of NGS season 14. I am Bloody Drapes, and with me, I have my favorite captain because it's my captain, Vix Machina. <laughs> I think you're a little biased there. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to being a co-caster for the first time i hope you enjoy it and i hope everybody out there enjoys it well thank you i think i will all right we have greg versus roll one esports and who has a better name than greg i mean it's perfect so <laughs> i'm not convinced at this point that the entire team is like a hive mind <laughs> under that one name <laughs> it could be so for tonight's uh matchup uh, Greg has banned Towers of Doom and Infernal Shrines. Over for the side of Roll One Esports, we have a Braxis, uh, Braxis ban and a Volskaya ban. And I need to have the right band Braxis up there. There we go. And we are going into the draft right now on Dragonshire. So let's head there now. It looks like on the side of Greg, there was an ETC ban quickly picked up. I'm glad you caught it because I missed it. All right. So, and we do get the Brightwing. Now, Vix, as a healer, how much do you love the Brightwing on this map? <laughs> I love her absolutely, completely. Uh, there are so many different plays you can do with the Brightwing. Suddenly reinforce your offlane. Uh, you can be everywhere on the, on the map at once. It's and wonderful. I, and I both love and hate Brightwing because I hate it when we don't have it and I love it when we do. <laughs> so thank you, uh, Homeo Po, for, for the follow. I appreciate it. We do have an ETC ban, as you said, and a Junkrat ban. Uh, Junkrat is very troublesome on this map. I hate to face one. Definitely. He... He has so much poke potential, and he's so good at taking down buildings as well. And on the side of roll one, there's an or Orphea band. I like the Orphea band, uh, especially since you're going to be in the bottom lane on this map for the most of the team. So she really gets great value when you're stuck in a lane together. Yeah, her her op her abilities get very good values when team fights are long and uh, she, she can sustain herself for a very long time I, I, joanna picked up very early on by greg i i'd like the joe pick my only issue with an early joe pick is the counter variant pick you know shattered shatter the d trait so i wonder if we'll see that there although it is up I do know Roll One's esports. Their tank rock can play just about any tank really well. I know as a Nubarak is crazy. We do see a Stukov and a Chromie. What do you think with that combo so far? I love seeing Tychus. He's one of my favorite heroes to play and to to see. On you the mean field. Stukov? You said Tychus. Stukov? Oh, Stukov. I don't know why I keep saying Tychus tonight. Getting a Cassia in a Leo early. I'm surprised to see the offlaner so early. Unless it's not an offlaner. It's very possible. I mean it's 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 not impossible to see. Right, and a Dragonshire, if you had double tank and the well, tank and hard heavy bruiser, that could help out quite a bit. What are we gonna get so they the might be game? able to play some mind games with uh, Roll One on this first game. They got the Anduin ban late. Uh, I'm surprised that Anduin made it unless they never thought of Anduin healing with Joe. But it seems like it could have been a pretty good pick. I feel like that combo is pretty good together. But I mean, this is a higher elo, so who knows? Yeah. Uh, it... We aren't quite aware of what those teams usually play and what kind of scouting they've done, so it might be in function of that. Yep. And getting rid of the stitches because the stitches counters the Joe so hard. We get a hogger. I'm looking forward to seeing that. That is actually a good matchup. 
Definitely. Is it a good matchup against Leoric alone or against both Leoric and Joanna? So Hogger can displace Joe a little bit, um, depending on the ultimate. He really can mess with a Leo because Leo is all about uh, sucky hand and Hogger can just E away from it. So That's true. We do get the Anubarak from uh, Rock Your World. Fantastic Anubarak player. From order comes I can't wait to see it. I will fight to my last breath. And so it's a Rhaegar that they end up picking as a healer on the side of Greg. So how do you like that Rhaegar into this comp? Uh, obviously I'm at a much lower MMR, so... <laughs> I'm not entirely. We don't see a whole lot of hoggers and chromies at our level, so I'm not entirely sure how to play into that. But I know for sure that as a Rhaegar, I don't like playing into a Stukov. Oh, Falstead. Oh, that can be devastating on this team, considering that he can fly north at any time and change that that one v one into a two v one. They do have the global advantage on the side of roll one. That could be deadly. Which team do you think has the better draft overall? It's hard to say. I feel like the side of Greg is going to be able to do a lot of damage. Uh, but I feel like there's more displacement on the side of Roll1 Esports. I'm going to play a quick video before we go into uh, the game. And we'll see you in just a second. Oh, a swap! Oh, oh no, but a swap followed by a light bulb. Here. Four man mosh pit followed by a tomb. Oh no! Oh, a huge light bomb coming in on the Genji, and that's a five man light bomb. They're gonna follow up and they're gonna get one, two, three kills. And it's gonna be everybody dying. Oh my god, when does this happen? Everybody's dead! And we are back and into game one. Greg versus Roll One Esports. On the side of Greg, we have Farfik Nugent on Johanna. We have Synthesis on Tassadar. We have Chim Chim on Leoric. Corrosive on Ragar. And Climbable on Cassie. And what do we have for the side of Roll One Esports? We have Rock Your W on the Anubarak. Uh, E. Juaneba on the Stukov, <laughs> uh, Poe on the Chromie, Mongoose on Falstad, and Easy Ad on Hogger, or Zad. I think, yeah, I I think just, it's Zad. So they call him Zad, and and it's uh, El Waniba. I only know, I so they, uh, Rock Your World used to be my coach, so I know these guys a little bit. Oh, right, the E is actually part of their, uh, their prefix. Yep. Barfik Nugent taking a lot of damage and still trying to stay in there. Rock is really body blocking hard. We see a lot of aggression already. Yeah, both teams being very aggressive. Both teams running the mid bot. Rock it looks like both of them are going to be roaming around uh, mid bodice four. Yeah, what's this up top? How's that going? Yeah, it's. It, I mean, it's close. Let's check this. So here's one thing that they'll be able to do on the side of roll one that they won't be able to do on the side of Greg. They can keep Falstead in the middle, and he's able to go anywhere as fast as he wants to. He can reinforce any shrine that needs to be taken or a camp that's being invaded. And here's where Hogger um, comes in really good. Early game self uh, camp take. So this is where they're going to have that advantage in just a second. Yeah, Greg takes their siege camp a little early, but it looks like thanks to the Hogger, Roll One is going to get their bruiser a lot earlier. Right. Ooh, we got a Ooh, three on one, three on two. Huge stun. Big block. 
Sukov will be the first to go down. That was rough. He was taken out of position, and Greg took full advantage of that. We got Mongoose, and it looks like Zed is going to come in, but they're not going to get the kill. And very hard to gank a Leo. And we have Greg pushing up against the uh, the wall to start here. And looking for a camp steal. Already putting a lot of pressure, taking the, the upper hand in the early game. Uh, there is no significant experience advantage yet, but... Looks like yeah, Greg well. has the momentum. Yeah, they're going to be able to push on this wall too, because Roland's going to have to answer the siege. Otherwise it'll take out the, the fort. It looks like Roll One is answering by doing a push of their own on the top lane, and they're getting a lot of damage on that fort. Oh wow, yeah, they got that fort down to half. Good call. I that... think Roll One got a little more value out of that. I think so too. I didn't see that at the beginning. And Mongoose is going to be able to just fly around, stop him from grabbing stuff. Oh, this Tukov comes really close to dying in the bottom late wait. But I'm lean. Barely escapes with his life. They've been really looking to get that Stukov. It is a really good pick. Stukov yeah. is really, really annoying in any sort of point control map. Oh, Stukov's in a little bit of trouble. Stukov going down to a quarter. Is Stukov going to... No, Stukov goes down again. They are looking for blood, and they're looking for Stukov blood specifically. Yeah. And they're able to capture both. There's a tough fight going at the top to keep that shrine in the hands of blue team. I don't know if Hawker can take the one-on-one -on -one yet. I know later in game... Oh, I missed the kill in the middle. <laughs> Mongoose was desperately trying to stop the Dragon Knight from being taken and cost him his life. Now the Dragon Knight is going to the side of Greg, pushing the middle wall. Yeah, they're going to get the early one. Usually this early one doesn't do too much. I just don't know if they have an answer right now because Chromie doesn't answer the Dragon Knight very well early game. Not really. The Dragon Knight is already doing a lot more damage than it should. Right. Well, they brought two. The False that will be able to take it down. Greg is putting a lot of pressure on the bottom lane as well, forcing the other team to answer and to respect it. And I've cast Roll 1 Esports. Oh, I, I don't usually see them on their back foot very often. This is odd for me, but Greg is... I mean, they're doing a great, great job. First four goes going to take... Yeah. That's very early in the game for it, too. And already they have a 10 to 9 advantage. So I'm going to go Let's... over their level 10s. Um, we have Ball Lightning. We have Entomb. We have Black Hole. And the other two haven't picked yet, but just between Black Hole, Entomb, and Ball Lightning, that's a wombo waiting to happen. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> it's going to make a lot, of, uh, a lot of noise one or the other. And we have Stukov getting some payback and killing the Regar. Level 10s are online for the side of roll 1. What are their level 10s, Vix? We see Cocoon out of the Anubarak, a Flaming Swipe out of the Stukov, Slowing Sands from the Chromie, Mighty Gust from the Falstad, we were looking forward to this one, and Hortipult from Hogger. All right, so once they get the Hortipult, that's when he's going to be able to start really affecting the Leo. Uh, just because you can set your Hortipult on fire so the Leo can't get near it, and it provides health. Looks like Roll1 is going to try and quickly burn that camp at the bottom. They have two parts of the boss. So when I say boss, if you can get both Siege 
and the very bottom together, walking together, it creates enough strength to be a boss on this map. It is very strong. It's it's a triangle of death. <laughs> and Stukov takes a kill on the Cassia. Stukov starting to get the payback. That must feel satisfying. Yeah, it's it's nice to get back in the game. It looks like both sh both shrines are going to go to roll one, and Falstad is uncontested to take the uh, the Dragon Knight. Oh, Mike oh, got it just in time. Yeah. Now, it, I mean, it looks like roll one's really starting to come back. Yeah, experience is back to about equal. This is anyone's game. And a lot of their team is like mid uh, healthy. You know, they don't start off strong, so. Maybe that's just what they needed was tens. They do have very strong tens, especially on the side of Anubarak, uh, Falstad, and uh, and Hogger. Right. The only thing is, is that, um, like we said, I don't think they drafted a whole lot of dragon burn, but it looks like Greg did. They burned that dragon pretty fast. But the Wombo Combo on the side of Greg is still an option, and we still haven't seen it in action. True. We may see it right here. Hogger in trouble. Hogger's thrown his, his ultimate. Stuck in the corner of the ultimate, though, and will go down. Meanwhile, Roll1 was taking down the siege camp of the side of Greg. And are pushing the bottom for as hard as they can with it. And we Not have quite gonna be. We have Leo going top to try to counter. Huge damage going out to Nubrak really fast. They have the blow up on the side of Greg. That was a very quick takedown. Yeah, it was. And just like that, false that fly stopped slow down Leoric's advance. Yeah, it might be able to stop Leoric altogether, depending on if they can get that uh, leader down for the bruisers. That's down. Gonna be able to back him right off. Where are we on the bottom here? We gotta fight for the bottom fort. They're slowly but surely doing damage to it. But with a Nubarak coming back, I don't think they're going to be able to take it down just yet. And a Nubarak going wide. Looking at the Leo kill, trying to get Leo and Corrosive. And Tomb is put down, but it's not quite going to be able to get the value he was hoping for. And he'll go down to the Siege. Huge damage on the Corrosive. Corrosive goes down as well. This is the team fight they were looking for. Farfic Nugget flies in. We're going to kill onto the Cassia. This gives a huge advantage to roll one. Yeah, they turn that right around. Beautiful fight. And now Falstead's going to be able to go right top. They'll have two mid waiting to take the dragon. They it doesn't look like anyone's going to be able to stop them. No. I tried to save this realm. And they have 16 right as the dragon starts as well. They're looking for a fight. Yeah, they, they should be at this point. Falstead's coming down, so the whole team's starting to group up. Falstead's looking to take mid by himself while they go bot, I think. I mean, this should be an easy fort. Oh, Tassadar goes down, too. You hate to see that happen when you're trying to tra take Dragon. Yeah, it's going to be even harder for them with their one of their major damage dealers down to take down the Dragon. Yeah, the keep is potentially in danger. Well, yeah, especially since a Nubarak can just drop beetles to turret tank. Huge kick on the Mongo or er, from the dragon onto Farfic Nugan. Here comes Ball Lightning. A good disengage from the Stukov. Oh, it looks like Leo tried to counter him on the outside. They're going to be able to back right off. So Surprisingly, no more kills. Good damage onto the keep, though. And with that, roll one is taking the advantage in the game. 
Yeah, 17, 16, up one kill, five, six to five. And they're it really looks like they're looking to paint the entire map red. Yeah, I think they're going to be able to get it pretty easily. Uh, they've really pushed uh, Greg off onto their backside. And we have a five man for Greg all bottom, which is leaving Hogger and Falstead to run around the map and push. It looks like Roll One's setting up for a gank. Ooh, I like that. We'll see if they manage to catch someone. They have their Falstead with them now. I think they might have been seen. That's very possible. We are Rick playing it safe. Yep. I think Farfignigan just threw shield? No, didn't. Both teams have all of their ults up. So should she see a good fight right here coming up? Yeah, I think it's in uh, Greg's advantage to try and get a fight before roll one gets their level 20. Oh, absolutely. And they take down that bottom fort. Big damage over onto uh, Stukov. Stukov trying to get away, down to a quarter of health. Barfik Nugent's chasing with Leo. Leo's going to get the Entomb, and Stukov. Beautiful Entomb. Stukov just getting picked on. I think that's what uh, Greg was looking f to do, to uh, get some space to breathe. Yeah, some that, more could pressure. Be a, that could be a big thing for them right now with the... Uh, dropping of their stew cop they're gonna have 40 seconds left to wait and it's during a dragon phase so the death timers are pretty long now at this time of the game so any kill is worth quite a lot i i feel like hoggers just having free reign all around the map to try to get 20 quick Greg yeah, is the Hogger together. has been getting a lot of experience for his team. Yeah, and Greg has been sticking together as a five man. Big in tomb, but not 20 yet, so Nubarak's able to escape. Now, something that Greg's going to have to watch out for that we haven't really seen is Gus. Right, at level 20. Oh, there it is. It's. Uh... The upgrade, Wind Tunnel. Yeah, Wind Tunnel can be deadly. That is going to be a huge game changer, potentially. The only way they can answer it, I mean, would be Johanna to push through it, but it doesn't matter. Once it goes off, it goes off. Johanna alone obviously can't team fight the, the enemy team on her own. Right, and actually it's a bad idea to even try to, so... <laughs> Looking for the gank again. I think they've seen the move they want to. Rock moves in. Stukov drops the puddle. Huge damage onto the Leo. This whole time, the Joanna was cocooned as well, unable to help her team peel. Are we going to see another death? Big Gus coming out. Oh, Hogger goes down, trying to stay up front, but taking the tower shots. Falstad is running away for his life. Looks like he's going to be able to get away. Yeah, should be able to get away there. That team fight went the wrong way. Well, I guess one and one, but... It's still fairly equal, but the Lyric is going to be available a little earlier for Greg. Right. So they're just going to play the cat and mouse game at this point. Grab a, grab a uh, bruiser channel and run to the other one. Or they're looking for a fight. We're going to take this camp. Yeah, both teams playing it relatively equal so far. I couldn't possibly tell you who's the who has the advantage right now. Yeah, it's been pretty back and forth. There's a lot of pressure top for uh, Roll1, though. And the entire team of, uh, of Greg is not quite there yet. Looks like they're going to go answer it, though. 
which is going to allow Roll One to finish off that camp bottom and grab their big their camp siege to push, which will mean another thing for Greg to have to go and answer at some point. Yes, it does look like Roll One has a slight step forward at this point. Bruiser's taken by Greg, so that'll be a good push, but they need to answer top for roll one anyway, so they may just run for bottom keep or look for a fight on it. Greg Cocoon Joe, or, or Joe got Cocoon on the side of Greg. They're not going for a kill on it, though. Huge and Tomb comes out. On the Anubarak, but the wind tunnel saves his life. Yeah, I mean, what do you do? You, it's hard to answer that wind tunnel. It is down for an, for 50 seconds, though. And Falstead's able to just fly top, take that top, take down this camp that they got pushing. That's a huge advantage. The Chromie almost managed to channel the Dragon Knight, but Cassia, just at the right time, manages to change the color on that bottom uh, shrine. Yeah, it was close. New Rack just backing out of there. They're not looking for a fight. Looks like they're going to head bottom as five. Nope, Hoggers are going to stay mid. I think Rule 1 is looking for a fight. Oh, here and is they're the fight. Finding it. Wow, that was a quick burn onto the Leoric. Now they're all in. New Rack diving misses the target. And suddenly, Roll One has a relatively large advantage to try and grab the Dragon Knight, which could potentially end the game. Cocoon and the Joanna, too. Oh, huge stop onto the the Joe. That was very good play from both Stukov and Anubarak. Yeah, that's a good combo. We may have to use that. <laughs> <laughs> Taking notes? Yep. <laughs> All right, what can they get done with this? It looks like they're just trying to distract uh, Greg. Oh, Falstead was moving bottom by himself. Yeah, they have pressure on the bottom wave. Oh, on yeah. Lane. So they'll have to answer that. They're kind of... feels like they're kind of wasting this dragon. A lot of... already half time spent on the dragon and not much has been done. Yeah, it's... I guess they really don't worry about it. That's the difference between our ELO and another. Yeah, I would have dove for the, the keep, but that might not have been the, good, the, the right call. I'm not entirely sure. Right. I, I would have done the same thing, but we're overly aggressive, so... They finally take down a keep with it. Another huge gust, or wind tunnel. The puddle goes down. There, it looks like they're just trying to back off. Another pretty good disengage from the Stukov, managing to keep his team safe and sound. And keeping the pressure now on top and bottom. Really good job on the side of roll on there. It's making Greg have to answer when they don't want to. Ooh, both teams are going for that bottom camp. Oh, this should be a good fight. Nubrak waited. Coming around the corner. Roll one is spread in two right now. Corrosive taking a lot of damage, but able to get out. That should give this... Are they going to go for that bottom camp? They are. So that was pretty this... well played from the side of uh, roll one. Some pretty good Stukov pedals. Yeah, and they were able to just push him out to the point where they didn't want to fight. And let's see what we got. Oh, big and tomb under the silence, and a Nubarak goes down. Huge pick on the side of Greg. The rest of the team was just too far away, but Clem. Er, er. I don't know how to say the Cassia's name. <laughs> Cassia. Uh, gonna... Climbable Unk? Climbable Unk. Okay. I'll, climbable I'll take unk. Your word. <laughs> I think so. 
Here's where Hogger gets his advantages. He's so fast at taking camps. He is, especially in those later levels. And if they had a Nubarak up, they'd be able to answer and steal this bruiser camp. But right now, they're just keeping their side taken. Yeah, it doesn't look like Greg is going to quite be able to take advantage of the Nubarak pick. Uh, apart from just relieving some pressure, making sure that uh, Roll 1 doesn't keep putting pressure on them. Yeah, I think that's going to be their advantage for Roll 1, as they have so much pressure that one kill doesn't really hurt them all that much where are we going now we got a bush gank set up nope i think they're just looking to take the long rate way down both teams heading down right the leoric is staying top to take that um that shrine up Oh, they do they have somebody? Oh, yeah, they do have somebody mid already ready to take the dragon. They got the dragon out of it. Huge play from the Joanna, distracting Roll One just long enough for her team to uh, to be able to take the dragon. And now they're busy killing rather than killing that dragon. And the dragon is going straight for it. Oh yeah, not taking a step back. False said trying to answer. Boston has the best burn onto him. Leo trying to get out of there. Will get out of there. And fort down for roll one. They also have a huge wave pushing the top. It looks like that's going to go down as well. Yeah, at this point, the dragon could probably just hit the bridge of death and block him. But nope, gonna go up and take shots. Play it a little safe. Ballstead really able to take down that dragon pretty easily. Yeah, it doesn't look like the dragon is going to be able to do a whole lot more this time around. Blue team's core is under attack. Oh, they're on. They have core already. Wow. Yeah, they have three catapults pushing. Greg has to respond to that. The percentage of health is going down really, really fast. Yeah, they're not even paying attention to it. They're just trying to block top. Good strategy by Roll One Esports. It's down to Both 71. Both teams making good use of the assets that they have. Red team has destroyed a fort. And Roll we have another keep be. going down. Roll One's really just playing the long game. It feels like. It does seem to work very well for them. Yeah. All right, where are we gonna look for a team fight? Bottom roll one's coming around the top. They're looking for something to back out of it. Looks like they're gonna head for that bottom camp. I like how roll one are very careful about their engagements. They don't seem to really engage unless they think they have the advantage. Yeah, it's. It's something I think we need to learn from them, but... <laughs> I mean, they are really calculated. Looks like they're going to move in with this camp. They'll get the bonus armor out of it. Prepare yourselves, heroes. The shrines will soon be active again. Do you think they're looking to end with this? I don't think they're going to be able to. No, no I think they're going to wait for this next dragon. I think they're going to go catch their bruiser camp. I think they're going to go catch both top bruiser camps if they can. Both of them are coming up. Ooh, Falstead, Falstead at play top. at the top. They're, they're taking going both right for at the same time. They're going to have it. Yeah, they're going to hold oh, we got bottom. bottom just long enough. Oh, Ooh, they but don't they're not quite hold able it. To. Oh, the new brand goes down, changing everything for them. That puts them at a disadvantage for 52 seconds. That was very well played by Greg. We have... They're going to look to come over and take the bruisers from him. Gus comes out. 
but it doesn't and matter. The unstoppable comes through. Oh, and they get a kill on the hogger as well. This is a tough spot. Looks like they're going to try and end. Yeah, with five. They got it down to 93, 90, 80, 70, 60. They do have the damage. I think at 50, I, I think this is going to be over here. 29, good kill on, on to the false that changes up. And that's game. <laughs> wow, that turned really quick. Both teams playing really, really well. Uh, Roll one had the advantage for a large portion of the game, but Greg saw an advantage and took it, capitalized on it, and that was it. So let's look at the, the team's siege damage. We have two hundred seventy thousand for Tassinar, two hundred twenty-two thousand for Leoric. Uh, I mean, it was the most of the siege went over to the, to the side of Greg. We had. Chromie come in with uh, 220,000 and Hogger with 170,000. Damage wise, pretty big disparity. Chromie with 102,000, followed by Hogger at 80 or almost 80,000. Then we have Tassadar and Cassian coming up. I didn't expect that. I expected the side of Greg to have the high damage dealers, but look good for the side of uh, Roll One. That Chromie players was very, very good. No deaths throughout all of that. Yeah, that, that's amazing, especially on Chromie, as easy as Chromie is to kill. We got uh, Stukov with 94,000 healing, Regar with 118,000. Joe did 10,000 in healing, so good healing, good experience. Leoric with top experience, followed by Hogger, so it was close. And, I mean, good game. We're going to take a pause here and get ready for game number two. We'll be back in just a little bit.
Alright, so we are into game number two. We will have a map ban uh or a map pick of Tomb of the Spider Queen. Really like this map. Vix, can you explain exactly how this map works for the folks that they don't know? <laughs> of course. Um it's fairly simple. The uh back three minions of each wave, the ranged minions, are spiders on this map, and when you kill them, they drop gems. Gather the gems, turn them in at the uh, two uh, turn-in stations on the map, and then you have three spiders, one pushing each lane for you. Uh, and they are quite strong. All right. Good map explanation, and let's get into this draft. Game one, going over to Greg. Very back-and-forth game. Uh, I anybody could have had that at just last spot went over to Greg with a good team fight. Then they were just able to follow it up on core with some kills to make sure that uh, roll one esports couldn't get back into it. I was very impressed with the level of play from both teams and I'm definitely taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. That's why I cast these upper games so that I can learn a little something more for when we're playing. We have an ETC ban right away. Um, that's a targeted ban onto a rocky world. Leo ban after that last game. That Leo was formidable. That is a respect pick and uh, a respect ban, rather, and I think it's very justified. Oh, absolutely. I wonder if Greg is going to ban the Hogger since it was so efficient. Yeah, I think that, that Hogger did a really good job, and on this map, Hogger is pretty good. Uh, this is one of Hogger's better maps. We do get a Joe ban. So they're banning themselves out from Joe. I wouldn't be surprised if Roll1 plays Joanna as well. Oh, I'm sure they do. I mean, I think I think Rock can pretty much roll anything into the tank spot. And the Brightwing is banned. Alright. Not expecting the Brightwing ban. Um right away because i mean nobody took it last game i guess with uh with greg having the first pick you don't ever want to see him grab the bright wings so it's understandable that's true she's a little bit less useful on this map given how small it is but even then she's still a very strong healer all around yeah that's the last thing you want is to be winning an off lane and then have a bright wing show up that's true we got a first pick, May. I like May, although really counterable. So I don't know if I would have taken the first pick on it. I'm surprised. Yep, there's Stukov. Stukov again. I'm, I'm surprised that it went through. The Stukov on, on uh, one side did really well last game. Uh, they picked on, they picked on the Stukov early game, though. So I wonder that's if true. that's why they let it through. Good luck picking on it when you have a KT to block. Big damage that'll come out of that KT. And we get, a, we get the Rhaegar, and they get the Orphea that they originally wanted in that first game, but were blocked on. So, must be a really good Orphea player, I take it? I, I suspect so, and I can't wait to see how uh, Synthesis is going to play her. I wonder what we're going to get for this third ban. It's going to be a big DPS, more than likely. We get a NAS ban. I'm surprised with the NAS ban running an Orphea already. Yeah, it's not very common to see double mages, but it is possible. I mean, Nazebo is just very good on this map, also. That, that is true, and it gives, because the map's so small, they can double soak and stack really fast. I'm sure, I'm, I'm imagining we're going to see an Anubarak ban here. Yeah. Yeah. 
pretty good ban, I, I believe. Yeah, I mean, a new Barak can really go after the Orphea. Makes yeah, sense. Yeah, and, and mitigate a lot of her damage, too. Right. So I wonder what the next two picks will be. I wonder what their big A will be if they take an A. I oh, will get an Imperius and a Stitches. So Stitches was banned out in that first game, and now it's going to get led through... So both teams getting something they wanted. I love that combo. I love to see Imperius on the field. Especially an Imperius with the stitches. What a wombo. Oh with yeah, they're going to be... And a Stukov puddle. And a Kael'thas follow-up. This is going to be a very strong pick comp that they're aiming towards. <laughs> Gaslo. So Gaslo is very good at countering a Stitches because of, if you go turret build, you can drop so many turrets that the Stitches can't get through it. So that's a good pick. Tychus to try to tear down the Stitches. And Imperius, too. Right, and Imperius is going to do well. Um, that's kind of a skill matchup between Gaslo and Imperius. Oh, Tracer, the mosquito of all players. <laughs> That's going to be the bane of Orphea, I think. Oh, for sure. And uh, it's a bane for Gaslow, too. Ugh. You, I I hate to see a Tracer on the map. Tigers, though, I, I think plays surprisingly well into a Tracer. Uh, Yeah, especially grenade build. If you can land a grenade, you're going to half health her pretty easy. It's not easy to land a grenade on her because she moves so much, but if you can time it up, that could be enough to really get some damage down. And I, but I don't know if they have an answer to be able to stop her in her tracks. Not a whole lot of CC on the side of Greg. That's true. If 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 Roll One is able to get those picks with uh, the, the, their crazy combo that they have going. It's going to be hard for Greg to uh, to respond to that, I think. I totally agree. So we're going into game two. Need to switch this over to live screen. And on for your side of Greg, we have Farfic Nugent on May. We have Chim Chim on Tykan. I'm just going to call it Chim Chim. Corrosive on Ragar. And... <laughs> Climbable Unk on Gaslo and Synthesis on the Orphea. What do we have on the side of Roll One Esports? We have Ruck Your W on the Stitches, Mongoose on Tracer, Zad on Imperius, Poe on the Kael'thas, and Juaneba once again on the Stukov. All right, we should. I mean, this is gonna be a different play style. It feels like on the side of Roll One Esports, they are very CC heavy. Last game, they weren't so much, but, I mean, they had an Anubarak, so. Already looking for kills. Big damage over on the Farfik Nugent. Farfik Nugent then down to half, having to shield, and goes down. Quick kill in the game. What an execution on the side of row one. And over for the side of Greg, we had the... What do we have going bottom? Okay, Gazlo's coming bottom. Gazlo had started top, which was a little odd to me, but... Looks like he lost a little bit of experience, but not too much. And I think over on the side of Roll 1 Esports, they're going to have a little better wave clear, so they're going to be a little faster. It seems that way they're already getting a slight advantage on their rotation. Mongoose looking to dismount rotating enemy heroes. Yeah, they're doing a really good job holding them back. Farfic Nugent's in the right spot now to try to stop them. They're going to be able to go through. And like I thought, Gaslo pushing on that Imperius. Early game, Imperius is going to struggle. Uh, but it is a skill matchup, so... What do we got up at the top? Firefight Nugent's having to use their Blizzard, which is going to give them a mana problem at some point. It looks like Roll1 already takes down 
Uh, their bruiser. Looking for a big push in the middle wave. Middle lane. Yeah, they, let's see if they can get a wall here or something. Stitch is just looking for that hook. Big hook goes out onto the KT, or onto Corrosive. But Rhaegar uses his trait, his uh, mounting rather, to quickly jump out of the way. Yeah, that's going to be tough into the Stitches. The Stitches isn't going to be able to really take on that, that uh, Rhaegar. You gotta give something to Greg is that most of their heroes have some sort of movement ability that they can use to try and get away. True. I didn't think of that. And Greg comes down to bully on Imperius, trying to get a gank. Imperius able to get out, but they are gonna come down and grab that bottom camp. So one hard problem for Imperius, he's not the greatest camp clearer. That's true. A lot of his kit is about those uh, those one v one picks that he can try and get. Yeah, for sure. All right, roll one, turn it in top. Let's see if they're the first ones to reach enough gems to turn in. And nobody pushes. That's surprising to me that nobody tried pushing with that siege camp, knowing Imperius can't move a whole lot. Gazel might be in trouble here. Big stab onto the Gazel, and Gazel will go down. That was a very quick rotation. And that's going to be the problem for Gazel, is if Imperius can can land his stabs, um, it's it's a bad game for you as a Gazel. And with that Gazel dead early on, oh, it's actually going to the blue team. They managed to quickly get the difference in gems that they needed and turn in sneakily at the top. Well done. Wow, I wasn't expecting that one. Well, <laughs> Me neither. Let's see what they're able to do. If they're going to be able to get a fourth down or if they're going for all three walls. This is where Imperius is going to have trouble. And it looks like Greg wants to capitalize on it. Yeah, I mean, as they should. Uh, go bottom and stop the Imperius. Oop, they changed their minds. Here's the thing, you got a tracer. The little mosquito can take down those spiders pretty quickly on her own. That's true. There's no character I hate more in this game than Tracer. <laughs> Not even Valera? Valera doesn't touch it. I I've had so many games where I thought I was going to own on Deathwing, and then they bring in a tracer, and I get mosquitoed to death the whole game. Not that yeah, I played she... Deathwing in any way, shape, or form. So anybody scouting? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's a secret. Right. <laughs> Ooh, huge pick on the uh, on, on the Imperius. Yeah, they're gonna really bully this bottom lane when it comes to spiders. I feel like they already almost took down the fort. Just a little speck of health left on it. Farfig Nugan's waiting up there to stall. Looks like Roll One is just waiting. Tracer with 31 gems, gonna have to turn in. And while that May is uh, distracting them, they grab their Bruiser Camp. Looks like they're gonna. So Roll One gets most of the turn in. Still five short. It looks like Greg wants to just take down that little speck of health left. They managed to get it. Yeah, that that little advantage is such a big advantage when Imperius has got to move back in order to well. Yeah, he's he no longer has a well, and I believe uh, catapults are going to start pushing there as well. Ektar says, I like both of these teams, but it's really hard not to root for a team called Greg. <laughs> I know, I've been feeling that the whole night. Yeah, we're trying to stay impartial, though. <laughs> right. But, I mean, it's Greg. <laughs> they, 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 won, they won the name game. We'll, yeah. we'll give them that. For sure. And it looks like Roll One just not able to turn in. They're desperately trying to, but Greg is doing a good job of being everywhere at once, just getting those interrupts off. 
At this point, Roland has enough for two turn-ins. Greg turning in right now. They're still short by six or by eleven. Eleven. That's not a. That's not a lot. No. And if Greg can take a few good picks on those high gem heroes like Tracer, they can deny those two potential turn ins they have. Oh, we just had an ice wall and a gravel bomb miss. This may help roll one to push them back now. They still have all of their ultimates. And Poe is going to get the turn in. That's all they needed. Now they're on the go. And they're going to hard push with that bruiser camp. Orpheus, bruiser camp getting... Orpheus ult didn't do anything. That's true, but it did take care of the bruiser camp. Oh yeah, I see that now. Alright, what are they going to do here? Are they going to be able to get some walls? Are they going to get some forts? Are they going to counter that bottom? Gazelle's going already on it, so that bottom is going to go nowhere. Oh, Imperius is rotating to try and take care of him. Huge stab onto him. Yeah, Imperius is getting the advantage down there. I don't know it'll be enough. Let's check this mid. Ice oh. wall out. Misses again. But That's it's going to be hurt. enough. And it's going to be enough for that spider where they're not going to be able to do anything. I mean, they're going to get walls down, and I think that's it with that first spider. Yep, Greg managing to hold out Pretty good just defense. well enough. Yeah, good defense. And that's what I, I, I think that's what we feel like we have here is one team looking for the kill. And one team looking for defense and hard push. They're looking to play the long game. Yeah. There's still a turn in available for both teams at the moment. Looks like roll one's looking. Oh, huge uh, gorge. But May is able to slide out of there. Yeah, May definitely. Probably the, the hardest hero to gorge. And Greg on their able team. to get the next spider. What is Greg going to be able to do with it? I Roland is really on their back foot right now. That middle spider is already pushed pretty far in the lane. Yeah, and they're going to elect to bring Gazlo up, knowing that Imperius can't really stop that spider. Spider is already onto the fort. It looks like it's going to go down. That's the third ice wall in a row to miss. Granted, yeah, it needs um, to block them out. That's true. It can be used to, to, to block people out as well. We have a half a spider on top going for the keep. Right now, roll one's just being out macro. Greg is taking a big advantage. They all they, they have all of their forts still. They managed to hold out, and now they are bringing in the pain. Roland's got to hope that this next fighter really does some damage for him. Yeah, they're going to have to work hard to try and bring this game back to a an equal level. Experience wise, though, it is pretty equal. It is, but I I almost feel like you have to match that bottom back up because of. Again, Imperius doesn't lane well into mobs or especially into a Gazel that can just push. So that, that bottom is just getting free rain. And there's already a camp in it. It's been it's been looking bad for, for Roll One in that bottom lane for the entirety of the game. Yeah. And it's gonna that camp now is gonna control that spider pretty well. It looks like they're committed to trying to take down that middle fort, though. But you got Odin that's going to be able to really kill that spider from such a distance. Yep, oh, but the Gasler is out of position. Oh, are they going to get the gas? Big spear onto the gas. Ice wall comes out. Gas goes down anyways. To the puddle. Oh, Stitch, Stitch is missed. Otherwise, he would have had a good gorge. He could have gotten another pick. 
which would have been able uh, enough to take down a fort. Now it's a 5v4 still for them. And look in that bottom lane, that spider didn't kill the siege. Wow, I thought the siege would go down at least, but no, it's still strong and, and going. Yeah, that's a huge advantage right now for Greg. Someone that siege is, is making go. its way to, to the keep and soon it's going to be right on top of it. Yeah, they're going to have to answer. It's on the wall right now. It's going to take down one of those turrets. Someone's got to answer. Looks like Imperius is coming back to answer. Roll 1 still has a turn in uh, left in them. Didn't quite manage to get the value they wanted from the, the previous two. I just really think it's draft in this one. There's just more macro stop power which i didn't expect but the gas will make some a big difference into an imperious in the long game and i feel like the tracer doesn't offer enough wave clear either yeah i really liked the roll ones oh huge fight oh wow big damage going out big wombo imperious goes down stitches goes down what a gravel bomb and now Roll one no longer has turn in. Yeah, it's it's gone. They they have to build it back up. I really liked uh, Roll one's uh, uh, comp initially. They had they have great pick potential, but Greg has been able to mitigate it at every turn, and now they're taking the boss. Yeah, it's. It, it's really felt one-sided and again i feel like it all comes in that bruiser lane so now it was a huge impact already the, the the first fork to go down was the bottom one bottom was had pressure in it the whole time yeah i mean all the way keep walls gone now oh no imperius is caught a little outside it's gonna get caught we're going to have Imperius go down. KT goes down. This is a big advantage. This may be game on the side of uh, Greg. They don't manage to secure the kill on the Orphea either. This might be game. May, yeah. Oh, Tracer goes down too. I think this is game. With a uh, boss pushing and all five members of Greg still alive, this... Yes, this is game. Yeah, for sure. A much more decisive game this time around. Yeah, it did feel very one-sided the second game. Well, GG's over to Greg. 2-0 uh, domination over one, Roll 1 Esports. And we have to switch lobbies over to NGS so we can do an interview. So give me right. one second and we'll be over in Lobby 2. So we are in lobby waiting for an interview. Uh, let's look at bats. Siege damage, 109 or 107,000 for the Gaslow compared to the KT with the 97,000. Uh, damage wise, we have 30,000 out of Orphea, right behind the Tychus at 24,000, Tracer at 20,000. I don't feel like that Tracer was very impactful. How do you feel on that one, Vix? Uh, it, it felt like she managed to get a lot of work done on the spiders, but overall, it, it feels like, it, it feels like you're right. She didn't get, manage to get as much done as she was hoping for. Still a lot of damage, but nowhere near the Orphea of, of Greg. And we are uh, here. We have a uh, interview now, post game, with two members from Greg Farfik Nugan and Corrosive. Welcome. Hi. Uh, hey. Rock Rock Your W is a, a saying there should be a third one. Uh, there should. Oh be no, a... no no no! Never mind. No, we're good. We're good. I'm, uh, no, I'm no. an idiot. Only two, <laughs> yeah. Uh, very good games. Uh, walk us through your thoughts on that first game and what you were doing in draft and. How you feeling there? Um, 
honestly, uh, <laughs> we we knew they they have a they have a pretty big team, so we were kind of talking about what we were gonna like counter this, that, and the other, and we're like, you know what, we just kind of have to wait to see who shows up, and then they showed up with um with two two people that play tanks. So Mongoose is kind of a wild card. I was like, well, like if we can choke tank choke, right? Uh, we can tank choke and we can control the game that way because they gave us first pick. So we took their Joanna from them at the very beginning and then we took the May from them in the second game. Um, and we're just trying to choke the tank down so we know that tanks can absolutely control the flow of the battle there. So, and mostly it was it was screaming and butt puckering 90% of the time. <laughs> well, in, in Rocky World's uh, Anubarak, I know from um, actually playing against him and having him coach. Uh, is deadly and he did real well in that first game but it just feels like there wasn't enough follow-up and that back that game for you guys was back and forth all the way to the end i mean were you he guys sweating it? Kills. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that look listen i'm not gonna lie i think my heart stopped a couple times during that game because <laughs> i mean that game went on for what 25 minutes plus yeah <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was there like, next dragon wins it, guys. Well, and, and Vix and I are sitting here going, I think the advantage is to roll one. No, it's to Greg. No, it's to roll one. No, it's to <laughs> Greg. And then we're like, oh, yeah, roll one looks like they have it. And all of a sudden you started killing. And I'm like, okay, this is over. And then the stagger and then the stagger. So it's literally one team blows all their heroics if someone dies. <laughs> yeah. You've got the advantage. If not, the other team's pushing you back. Yeah, it, great healing tonight on the Ragar. Both games, I was surprised it went through the second game. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, usually Ragar's a pretty high band. Um, I mean, we suspected the Brightwing because no one on their team really played Brightwing a lot that we saw. So we are like, they should ban out the Brightwing. We don't have to worry about that. <laughs> and as an off laner, like I was saying, so Vix is my healer for my team. She loves Brightwing. I If, if, if Vix isn't playing Brightwing... It's the bane of my existence because I know it's never going to be a true 1v1 and I never can just kill the guy off and take my lane over. So uh, I get you. Uh, I'm not wanting to see the bright wing. Um, so going into game number two, how were you feeling? We you had the euph euphoria getting that win coming in. Uh, was this a map that you, you guys prefer? Or? Um... Honestly, uh, Tomb of the Spider Queen is one of those ones you you, you have a love hate relationship with. Uh, so you know we're a fairly new team, so play. So a lot of these maps are still like figuring each other out. So um, when I'm talking with with you know Rock Your W over here. Um, uh, you know it, it 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 does stink that you know we're like you know, both teams are kind of learning in a uh, NGS environment or match environment, but same time too, you know playoffs are coming way up way down the line right yep so we're just we're still we're all it's all fluid right now um so uh i wouldn't say it's a it's, it's a terrible map you know what i mean it's it's really uh to my in my opinion whoever controls the tempo the cadence from the get the get-go so whenever i died right there at the very beginning i was like oh there went the cadence <laughs> oh but you you guys put a clinic on on that map that first game was anybody's game that second right. game i I mixed it at any point did we think roll one had a shot because it felt like <laughs> all it would have taken is like a hook or two we dodged so many hooks oh like, yeah some of them were lucky <laughs> <laughs> they had a fantastic setup for a, a pick comp on that second game but you did an awesome job dodging the spears from imperius dodging the hooks from the the stitches it, it's like right. they could never land Kind of like maze ice walls. Shut up, man. Uh, we we did have like, a. Come on. To be fair, we did have a counter going uh, on how many ice walls you missed in a row. Uh, but I, I, so the fourth ice wall I gave you credit for because it blocked them out, so you could take the keep. So I mean, that's, that's fair. That was kind of like I was like, you know what? If I can't hit them, I can at least try to trap them in. <laughs> right. So <laughs> after I mean, like the second one, <laughs> it was fair on that one. I gave you that one, but the other ones were like, yep, there's three. Yep. Up, uh, up. Oh, there's four. Oh no, we'll leave four because he got the block. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um, no. Oh, look. The same thing with uh, Gazzo's grabo bomb. We're like, oh, just, it, just come on. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, at some point, the May grab bomb combo steps in, and yeah, yeah, it's deadly. Then you add Orphea on top of it to set up a grab bomb and ice wall. Like, yeah, it was crazy potential, and uh, it seemed like. 
it was pretty effortless uh i felt like when i saw the imperius come in in draft that it could be a skill matchup but it wasn't even close your gaslo just kind of walked away with it um, well i mean so we were hyper I, I, corrosive correct me if i'm wrong we were kind of hyper aware of the imperius down bot we're like oh gank no gank no gank no. yeah we, we kept like meandering towards the bottom so i think he i, I think that player probably had the paranoia there because we kept showing up and bought a, a yeah. lot yep um and there's right. no escape for an imperius right so <laughs> right if an imperius wants you he's getting you yeah <laughs> Uh, they picked uh, the character that I hate to see the most. I don't know how you feel on it, but I call her the Mosquito. I hate Tracer because I feel like she can last forever in lane. Were you ever worried about her? Or... Um, no. I, so, like, and not to discredit, discredit the player or, or, the, or the champion at all or hero. Um, I don't really worry about her because I play May or Joanna, right? Blind True. tank. So, yeah. I, so I'm, I'm not like she comes around me. It's like blind, go away. Now, if I see someone low, then I'm like, <laughs> yeah, uh, but that's where, that's where I throw the kitchen sink at them, right? And yeah. hopefully they recall and go away. Um, uh, but you know, if, if if I think if situations were just a little bit more in their favor, where they where they they could have got us a little bit lower from range, and they would have had the chromie they had in the first match. Um, <laughs> um, or if they'd have landed the hooks, I mean, for right, the yeah, yeah. the yeah. pulse bomb to land on someone that gets hooked in, it would have been like dead i yeah the only thing is that i i feel like they put all their eggs in stitch's basket um and your dodge was fantastic and again having gasol to be able to drop turrets when you are in a five man it makes it so much harder for stitches to land through he had some amazing turret drops yeah 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 there were a couple hair of the dogs that just missed the stitches hook Mm -hmm. Uh, when they had you coming up the middle with their spider going, uh, and they were looking for a hook and missed it into a turret, I was like, wow, perfect placement. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, listen, I, th- I think, I think they played great. Uh, like, and you know, you, 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 you kind of said like, you know, was it ever in their favor? Um, one hook and it could have been, <laughs> True. I mean, being, being, they, they could have turned the cadence of the, of the fight right there. 110%. And I know <laughs> how good that roll one esports is. They're one of those teams that can come back when you think that they're down and out completely. And so- I, on, on map one, I really, really thought that we were going to see a false dad fly and pick up the dragon. I take out the core. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> the, so the Chromie, you just caught that Chromie. I mean, it was, I mean, fraction of a second vix is that where we were about where they almost had that that last i think it was half a second or so that your, your cassia player really really pulled through on that one <laughs> managing uh, to turn down turn the bottom uh bottom shrine blue just at the right time yeah it was close yeah um we uh i our, our cassia player really thought there would be a cassia pen map too um <laughs> We were kind of curious what the ba- the, the the bands from Map Two were going to be, um, but yeah, no, uh, they put the, listen. They played their heart out. I, I'm not. I'm gonna give it to them. Honestly, it was a good close match. I mean, first game was eleven and eleven. There was a lot of back and forth deaths, and then this game is seven and three. Right? Like there isn't a whole lot of deaths. So you know, it's really honestly, whoever makes the first mistake suffers. Right? Yeah. Um, and that's just kind of how it is, especially like C and above. I feel like. Is you know first person to step out of line, get hooked, get CC'd somehow, get the wombo combo on them, and then it just turns the tide of the fight because then you can't go fight four v five. So you're just like, well, I'm gonna go you know, uh, twiddle my thumbs in my base or maybe get a camp, but maybe they're there. You don't really, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> Vix, Playing on the back foot's never fun. Vix, do you have any questions for him? All my questions were answered. I just want to congratulate you and your team for this this great victory tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Thank hey, you. thank you guys for casting too. I, I we really appreciate it. And it, I'm guessing you have this on uh, 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 VOD or, or replay for later. Oh yeah. yeah, so it'll it'll go all into the NGS website and and be reported awesome. and everything. So probably uh, tonight yet. Yeah, hopefully, if not tomorrow morning, it'll be set up. So um, yeah, great games. Um, I have to give it to you. I mean, I know how tough Roll One is. They can really. Get, they were great get to bruising and, and you guys did a really good job to face off against them and uh come out with the w 
Uh, do you have any um, any shout outs you want to do? Um, yeah, uh, thanks for Mebus. For, uh, he'll see us later. Thanks for Mebus for, for, for getting the setup for us and then being like, here, you're, you're, you're doing the roles tonight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's a compliment and a call out. But no, honestly, uh, 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 you know, shout out to the team. They did a great job. You know, as I said, we're new. We're getting used to everybody. I mean, Corrosive's literally, like, we've all known each other, but Corrosive's literally a brand new player to all of us. And, and he, he's jocking and jiving really well. Uh, shout out to uh, R1. I mean, they, they play their asses off. It was, I mean, uh, the 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 pucker factor was real. <laughs> and obviously, shout out to you guys because I mean, uh, we appreciate any cast. Honestly, it, it it we were a little bit giddy when we got casted. So <laughs> well, I, I love to do it, and you know, our team just got our first cast as a team. So like, we got out of our game pretty quickly tonight, and I was looking forward to be able to get a cast in, and to have one of my teammates with me just makes it that much better. So we appreciate yeah. having something to cast. Corrosive, to share the love. Yep. Yeah, Corrosive, you got anything? I, I kind of rambled. No, along. sir. You kind of covered it up, man. <laughs> the whole the whole team. It was a fun fun match tonight. Yeah. Well, congrats very much on the win. Um, I'll let you get back to your team and uh, celebrate, and we're gonna close this thing up. Awesome. Hey, thank you guys again. I uh, hope to see you in the future. Uh, hopefully next week. Wink, wink. Nice <laughs> <laughs> we'll see where I'm at. You know, if we dominate the team we're playing against fast enough, then I'll probably be able to do it. So <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Right, so, thanks, guys. Well, thank you very much. You have a good night. <laughs> you too. See good you guys. Night. Have a good evening. Yep. All right. So that's going to be it for us tonight. Uh, I want to thank my 